Alrighty, righty. Alrighty, righty. I can't see the picture, so I'm just gonna talk. So I've been looking for an outlet to describe um, what I've been researching for the last few years. And um, so there's the beginnings of a more than the beginnings. Maybe. I don't know. It stems from looking at the world as it exists now, in whatever perspective I'm at, wherever I'm at, um, without comparing it to someplace else I've been. And then allowing all this research about ancient cataclysms and comparative mythology and comparative physics and the history of money and the history of languages and I don't know how much other information is dumped into this thing. Um, and so when all of that boils together and we start to analyze what language is and how it functions. I mean, why is it that I know what an A is? And why is it that I have a sound that I associate to it? And why is it that other cultures might associate a different sound to that same symbol and it's confusing and I have a hard time learning it? And it's difficult for me to learn the words that they take, that they take for granted. Right? And so... <clears throat> What we end up discovering, if we dive into this, is that the sounds aren't describing a phenomenal experience that you had. Outside of human beings speaking, or maybe a bird that's been around people and has learned to parrot human speech, words like car and Volkswagen and holy shit the sky is falling those don't come out of nature the same way the sound of an erupting volcano or a granny's butt do right <laughs> so it's all based on what kind of perspective we want to take on the phenomena of language and that's going to determine our perspective on the rest of reality. If we look at language as a phenomena of reality, as in it has intrinsic meaning, and it is what creates our reality, then whatever it is we've been reading and people have been telling us our entire life is what we're going to expect to see. And when reality doesn't perform as we expect it to be, we're going to have some neurotic breaks. Because um, that shit just doesn't compute. The same parts of your mind are processing the correlations the language require and the phenomenal experiences your body requires to survive. Okay, so from outside of the language what you see is the symbols are just patterns that have gone from being pictographs down to simple pictures and they um, their function is to then trigger other correlations in the mind and it's based on context so if you look at Daniel Kahneman's thinking fast and slow he talks about priming the mind and so the last bit of abstract information that was given to the imagination is then kind of prime the way the next bit of information is processed 
And so when you read a sentence, every single word in it is priming based on the patterns you see in the sentence, whether they're direct or indirect. And if you've been trained to see indirect patterns, then you're going to get even more indirect responses. Um, an example could be sometimes you write the codes so that every letter of every sentence as you stack down the paragraph spells another secret word or something that you then use to apply somewhere else in the reading as a to then uncrack a cipher right you can do tricks like that and if you're but it, but if your mind isn't trained to look for those you're not going to understand what they're for uh, even if you find the words or you find the cipher it's going to be rare that you're going to find them together and then understand the context in which to use them you have to be trained for this that's why language is so powerful because it has no meaning right the letters don't produce the sounds that you expect them to that you recite when you see them when somebody says what do you want to eat you look at the menu and you talk well that's useful for identifying what you want to eat but it's not useful for presenting things in reality and experiencing reality you can't eat the words Right? Savory isn't an experience you can have. Yeah, you know, as you bite into your steak, it doesn't exist because it's just a word. But I can definitely present you with some uh, rhetoric that can stimulate neurological responses that may make your mouth water because you're thinking about baked potatoes and french fries, lightly salted with ketchup and ranch dressing. Whatever it is that you're fancy. So, that's the power of language that shouldn't be abused. Because language is an accounting tool. Um, as I look at the oldest histories we have, we don't know much about what happened to the ancient civilizations we have record of, and so we don't talk about them, because they destroy the myths we have about what we think we are. Um, so it looks like a cataclysm hit our planet about 13,000 years ago. And it uh, caused a flood. The Tree of Life mythology is connected to plasma discharges, high-energy electrical discharges like lightning bolts from the edge of the atmosphere down to the planet. Um, who knows what the water was doing? Uh, I'm not versed well enough in the natural phenomena of like old growth forests during like full moons and things like that in certain parts of the, of the forest where the natural energy of the earth boils out just like in a Japanese anime is things like what Victor Schauberger and the people are talking about. And that's what these myths are getting into is that some of that stuff was happening on like just an epic scale. Um, so, um, and then the planet burned, and then we had a big cataclysm, and then we have all these cultures grew up, and now they're describing things that don't exist in reality anymore. Like, there's no longer a tree of life, but we need it for our mythology, because it's our identity of who we are and where we came from. You know, because we don't remember the past, because this cataclysm probably lasted 500 to 1,000 years, if not longer. You know, so it's just like those movies, like Crawl, or The Dark Crystal, or any of those like 1970s like uh, B-movie uh, fantasy things or whatever, right? Like Willow or whatever. We have no idea what was going on during this thousand years as humanity was trying to survive. Um, living underground, maybe some cultures being in better locations or having a better understanding of what was happening, building civilizations and keeping them alive and keeping some kind of manner of thought and wisdom amongst the now chaotic life on planet Earth. Um, but all that was left by the time we had civilization, like the ancient Egyptians or the Babylonians, was language. We no longer had a representation of what life was like before the cataclysm. And so now you're stuck with living in an environment now with stories about a cataclysm that you don't know what they mean. You know, to you, they're gods, and, and, and you go through these rituals, and they've been perverted and changed just by the course of time and by storytelling. And so people start building cities. 